Your Detroit Lions. Wow. We talked about... (laughs) This is crazy to me. Two weeks ago, they were coming off arguably their most impressive win of the season. Heading into Buffalo, right? They go, play Buffalo. And they give them a game. They do. And that's a game you probably should win. Not only win, you shouldn't lose the way you did, but for... Coaching reasons, things happen, we move on. You have now won four of your last five games. And the most recent win, Jeff, 40-14 to 14 mm-hmm. against the team. Let's put it in perspective here. That's the litmus test. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Four and seven, four and seven. Both teams were picking one and two, mm-hmm. right? They're in the early to mid stage of a rebuild. They have talent, but they're not complete. But if you were to ask me before the game, who was the more complete team? It's obviously the Detroit Lions, and really because of the offense. Yeah. The offensive line, Amon Ross, St. Brown, the wide receivers they do have, they're not the best, but they're weapons. And you have, a, obviously, a legitimate receiver in Amon Ra. Swift being healthy, Williams, a goal line back. You but, have But you could pieces. argue, for the coaching advantage at least, uh, Super Bowl uh, winning sure, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson, the more so, experienced coach. Right. But you know, the, not only the winning coach, but the coach who, who has just done an uh, really, a complete 360 over the last five weeks. Dan Campbell, Detroit Lions, 4-1. and one. And we day back to that 1-6 and six start. Yep. Confidence is low. Not happy with the team. And I'll speak for myself. Not happy at all with coaching. Not happy at all with the team performance. And then what happens? They, I don't want to say they simplified the game, but they stopped making the same mistakes they always make. Right. And when they started doing that, suddenly they started winning. And then it was, they beat Green Bay. And then it was, they be Chicago. Mm-hmm. And then the wins kept stacking and stacking. And then you lose a tough game to Buffalo, a team that's clearly better than you, but you played them very well. And then you just go out and smack Jacksonville. This football team right now is playing their best football. And they've been playing their best football for five consecutive weeks. Impressed. So impressed. Hey, uh, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Even Ryan from Feldman's going to get on in the action. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Got to love it. But to your point, Adam, you play a close game against the Bills, and if anything, yes, you could argue they should have won that. I think I'd give more credit for Dan for being in that game, but what does that do moving forward? The Jags have an emotional victory over the Ravens. They win at the last second, two-point conversion. The Lions playing that game they did against the Bills – and then facing the Jags, it's like, hey, we played the Bills, a Super Bowl contending team, at home. You almost beat them. You followed up against the Jags, and you're like, oh, they're not the Bills. And not only are they not the Bills, they completely obliterated them. And, and we talk about first half first second half adjustments. The Lions played a complete game first quarter to the end of the game. They scored in every single quarter, which is something we brought up multiple times this year. So, again, I mean, Ben Johnson, Aaron Glenn, Dan Campbell, Jared Goff, Speaking DeAndre. Of, there's plenty. There's honestly so much credit to go around here. So good to see Swift. Yes. Get more touches than what he has been. Whether he's getting healthier or not is irrelevant to me right now. He looked good. He looked like Swift back in week two against Washington. Yes. And Jared Goff. Jared Goff looked like the quarterback you saw the first three, four weeks oh, of the that season. That was easily the guy his where best game of the season. Three, four games into the year, even though the record was one and three, I think everybody in the room, in the chat, you could acknowledge, hey, Jared Goff looks pretty damn good in this offense. Hey, you know what? Maybe we need to reconsider the idea of drafting a quarterback. And, and really, that's what today's show is going to be about. We're going to go through the list. What to do with Jared Goff? Should the Lions even consider drafting a quarterback with inspirational play like this? And that's the key word, Jeff, inspirational. Wins not only are what fix everything in the NFL, but it is performances like the Lions have been giving, Jeff, over the last five weeks that inspire confidence in the future. You know me, I've been very, very hard on Dan Campbell. You know I like him a lot. And when I mean I like him, I love the attitude. I love the persona. That's all great. I hate the coaching decisions at times, right? Last five weeks, outside of Buffalo, cleanest football I've seen coached in Detroit in a long time. Absolutely. Not committing penalties, winning the turnover battle. God, yesterday, they didn't let, they didn't let Buff, or excuse me, Buffalo, they didn't let Jacksonville breathe. <laughs> Think about it this way. They did not punt, Jeff. They went and scored on every possession. They did not take their foot off the gas, even up at halftime. Even coming out in the third quarter, they went and scored. They never gave Jacksonville a a glimmer of hope. 
And I love it. I, I love it. Mm-hmm. This is, oh, that is a great shirt. Fish, you need to wear that. Th- this is this is how you inspire confidence and change. This is how when you tell me, hey, Dan Campbell is the future head coach. Hey, Adam, this guy's the guy. He's going to get it done. It's performances like that that get me to buy in. Right. I don't, I don't buy in at one and six when you're making the same mistakes as year one. Right. But you will get me to buy in coaching and playing the way they have. And they deserve nothing but credit, Jeff. They really do. Jared Goff, I would say the best game of the season. Mm-hmm. He didn't turn the ball over. He was clean. Very, what's the word I want to use here? He was very clinical in his decision making. And what I mean by that is he didn't hesitate with any of his no. throws. No, no. He didn't hesitate. Chark had his best game. St. Brown, what do you know? Looking like a top 12, 15 wide receiver all over that again. That throw to DJ Chark at the beginning of the game. That was money. And that and that, that was that was the confidence he needed coming off of Buffalo. Fair? Yeah, fair. It was so impressive. So impressive. This team, you would have told me the Lions would manhandle Jacksonville 40 to 14. My goodness. James Houston, another sack. Aiden Hutchinson, half a sack. Trayvon Walker. Jared Goff put the shakes on him, almost broke his ankles, for God's sake. It was without without giving too much. Because the job's not over. Season's not over. Right. Um, there are still things, games, there are still narratives to play for. They're heading in the right direction right now. These last five weeks have me feeling, and I haven't, you know where I was before the season. I thought this was a very good football team. When I say very good, I'm not saying a division winner, but I thought this was a team that would give fits to anybody on their schedule. I was confident in them. And they had that one six start. And I don't think I've been more confident since maybe early August in this football team and in the direction they're going. And I talked to you about culture and how the only way to truly build culture, Jeff, isn't just by getting everybody to like you. You got to win. Got to win. And boy, Jeff, they're doing a lot of winning right now. Mm -hmm. And they're putting together complete performances. That was the thing we talked about earlier in the season is whether your offense doesn't show up, your defense shows up, or vice versa. The last five weeks, it's been... They've been put. They've been stringing along <laughs> these complete performances, and that's something that again you got to give credit to Dan Campbell to Ben Johnson, Aaron Glenn. They're aligned, and both sides of the ball are playing some of their best all year. So it was great to see, and the fact that they settled for those field goals at times and not trying to be aggressive and 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 playing the long game. Even they kicked field goals, zero punts. They were great on third down. Can't ask for nothing better. Oh, here comes. Uh, here comes hookah smoke. But no, you couldn't. It, it was a great performance, man. Jared Goff, they put the ball in his hands for a majority of the game, 31 for fo- of 41, uh, over, almost 400 yards, 350 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, you, you couldn't ask for anything better. Defensively, these guys stepped up, man. Okuda had a great game as well. So plenty plenty of um, of credit to go around. They played, no complete, they played a complete 60 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and you've seen it multiple times now under this head coach, something you didn't even see under the Jim Caldwell teams. Mm-hmm. The Jim Caldwell teams were known notoriously for fourth quarter comebacks, late field goals by Matt Prater. That was the Jim Caldwell era. Dan Campbell's teams are putting their foot on the gas early, and they're not letting up, especially the last five weeks. And again, all I asked for this season was seven to eight wins. That is it. Not only will they likely get it, they may clear it. And I, I don't think they, they win out. That is quite the statement. But did you but hear the way they're playing, why should I doubt them? And did you hear Dan after the game? This is what I loved in the locker room. He goes, in a six-game season, we're 1-0. and We're 1-0. and And I love that you take the six games and, and you put them in a sample size. And he's like, we're 1-0. and Let's get the next one. And I love that. Not looking too far back, looking ahead. Six games, they're 1-0. and now go, now go beat Minnesota at home. That's the next task, and we'll see. Minnesota's a damn good football team, but got to enjoy it, man. It was huge. Enjoy your, enjoy your victory Monday, Detroit. That no question. That is such a good victory. And again, litmus test. That was a Jacksonville team roughly – well, not roughly. They were in the same position you were last oh, year. Yeah. They sucked. They had a top two pick oh, yeah. just like you do. They were number one overall. You were number two. They went out and spent in, the, in free agency. You really did your work in the draft. You didn't really have much cap space. And now over next year and the year after, your cap space situation is going to be a lot better. And with inspirational play like yesterday, you can get me to buy in when you win. You don't get to call for patience. You don't get to tell me I need to buy in at one and six. You go out and win games? Oh, this makes my job so easy. makes my job so easy. I'm loving it. 
I'm loving the way this team is playing. Running the ball effectively. I love the use of Justin Jackson, by the way. I, I, I want to say two drops yesterday. Not his best day, but more DeAndre Swift. I like it. You see how much more dynamic this offense is. Amon Ross St. Brown continues to show you can't guard him. Nobody. Okay, he started the year off on a tear, just like he ended last season. You know what he did, Jeff? Got hurt. Messed up his ankle. Fake concussion. When I say fake concussion, I mean they ruled him out of the game in Dallas. That was a whole thing. And he slowly worked his way back. And over the last three weeks, you're seeing... I don't like using this word lightly, but you're seeing wide receiver one right now. Yeah, I, I You are seeing a legitimate wide receiver one. I don't want to hear talks of he's undersized. I don't want to hear it. No. It's the new NFL. He's a wide receiver I one think, in this offense. I'm going to go one step further. I, I think you can make a legitimate argument for Amon Ross St. Brown. He's a top 10 wide receiver. In terms of receptions, production, think about the games. Production he is. It, but. Th- but think about he got injured. If he didn't get injured in, in those performances, listen, what, he missed a game? Um, and then he had the concussion. He left the game early. If he was healthy all year, he's already, what, top 12 in yards, top 10 in touchdowns. He would be top 10 in everything. So, uh, certainly. Exceptional. Amon Ross St. Brown. 11 catches, two touchdowns. He's exceptional. One drop. One drop.